much uh, of decadal experience of mahavir sumit and aditya and in case our uh, speakers uh, our attendees have any questions surely they can type in uh, their questions in the comments and uh, or uh, they can send in a speaker request i'll approve and we will proceed with that so without uh, wasting any time let me take a moment to introduce our guest for today so we have with us uh, mahavir chopra sir is a qualified chartered accountant he had been working in online insurance industry for over 18 years and since 2020 he has been building beshak dot organization the only independent research platform in india that helps people make smart insurance decisions by providing them with useful tools guides and access to verified experts a very warm welcome sir and along with him we have uh, we have sumit ramani sir uh, a computer science engineer by be- uh, educational background and he has over 15 plus year, uh, 15 plus years of experience in insurance industry with stakeholders across the globe and he had the opportunity to price and design life and health insurance products and he also loves to deconstruct them for wider audience a very warm, warm welcome sumit thank you prince thanks so aditya is on 80 now so he uh, will be joining shortly so will also ask for his introduction so in uh, meanwhile i would request mahavir uh, sir so as to like add to the introduction just in case i missed anything and then you can also start with your opening note and then we go to sumit and then aditya yeah yeah sure sure thank you thank you prince for the kind introduction and uh, thank you for having me you know uh, uh, basically uh, the 17 18 years of experience taught me one thing that uh, you know being uh, from a distribution background i saw a gap in the kind of information that was available on the internet and the kind of experts that were available on the internet Uh, uh for customers who are looking for advice and uh, beshak is been my initiative to basically solve for being able to provide customers with trustworthy uh information and uh, advice right so that's that's uh, that's basically why we built beshak as an independent platform it's uh, why it's called independent it's called independent because we have no marketing distribution or any affiliate relationships with any insurers in the country we we have decoupled our relationships with any insurers company so that we are 100% true in our uh, information and our information is 100% undiluted for customers right so that's that's what we are building uh, and that's what we are solving for great thanks sir so sumit over to you yeah um uh... Uh, just to also add to the th- thank you prince for having me here and uh, arranging for this session right uh, happy to share what we have learned over a period of time just to add a bit uh, on the introduction side of things so i'm a computer science engineer turned actuary uh, so uh, not sure if many people know who actuaries are uh, actuaries in the insurance context are the people who design and price insurance products and when the policies are sold the claims would come at some point in time so we got, we as actuaries also get involved or actually own uh, in estimating the size of claims that would come over a period of time and set aside money so that these claims could be paid uh, so while uh, it's it's a fairly niche profession but i think uh, actuaries deal with the nuts and bolts of insurance products and insurance in general Uh, I've been in industry for a while, and uh, uh, off late, I've, uh, since last two years, uh, I've been building Protect Me Well, which is a comprehensive. Uh, it started as a comprehensive financial, uh, com- comprehensive financial needs analyzer. It's now uh, graduating to comprehensive financial planning engine, of which uh, insurance is very, very important part. Uh, we get into level of detail uh, in insurance uh, that. probably nobody else does uh and we come in exact uh, right in the beginning of any insurance buying journey uh which is uh, helping individuals identify what should be their size of cover across 
lines of insurance uh, starting with term insurance to medical insurance critical insurance disability uh, home home structure home content and then also uh, uh, that's on the one end of the spectrum uh, also we talk, we also do analysis for emergency corpus on the other hand we and we do retirement corpus uh, which helps people achieve their uh, identify what is that they need to save now to get there and all of it in one go yeah that's a bit about myself great, great thanks so so mahavir and sumit like will be starting with very basic questions so as to um, make last person understand the importance of health insurance and what all we need to look into it right so so uh, the very basic question to start with be what is a medical cover and there is always a doubt like do i need a cover as my office already covers me right so uh, let me answer that first uh, so yes uh, basically india a medical cover or a health insurance cover largely is a cover for uh, the risk of hospitalization and the expenses related to uh, uh, the risk of hospitalization so it's a financial cover over hospitalization expenses a health insurance basically covers all kind of hospitalization expenses and all allied expenses related to that hospitalization so that is what a health insurance cover is uh, it is also called mediclaim it is also called medical insurance and a lot of other names but largely the mainstream health insurance product uh, is a product that covers largely health uh, related expenses which are largely focused on hospitalization expenses there are a lot of other products that are coming up in the market which are now trying to cover Uh, outpatient or regular routine healthcare expenses, but those are still under experiment stage, and they are still a lot of them are not cost efficient. So today, health insurance or medical cover is largely a hospitalization financial risk cover. Right? That is what it is. And uh, your second question was that do do does a person need a cover if the person already has a cover from their office or their company? uh it, it it largely has a very default answer that yes uh, you know uh, you do need your own personal cover uh, it's typically uh, the way i explain it is that you know having a uh, a uh, a cover from of your office is largely like living in a rental house right where the landlord basically controls the entire house uh you know what kind of uh, it may actually control what kind of paint you can put on the walls it could also say that not to put any kind of you know uh, nails on the walls and all that stuff right so typically in the same case uh, the health insurance provided by your employer is also controlled by the employer in all ways uh it can be changed whenever the insurer uh, the, the insurer wants or the employer wants and uh, largely uh, it also obviously is restricted and linked to your employment right so as soon as you leave your employment the cover also stops right whereas what you are trying to cover when you are taking a health insurance uh, is basically long term financial uh, risk over hospitalization right so typically having a cover of your own ensures that you have a seamless cover over your entire life Uh, irrespective of whether you're working in an organization that provides your cover or not and beyond that which is basically post retirement right so it gives you that seamless cover the other question that immediately comes to mind is that i'll buy a cover you know whenever uh, i let's say leave my employment and i basically am retired uh, the biggest risk that you have when you do that is that let's say if there is any kind of illness or lag uh, any kind of lifestyle issue that you have in terms of let's say obesity or let's say having some kind of disease or any of your family members having disease there's a large risk in terms of you being able to get mainstream high quality comprehensive health insurance plans in the market you may have to compromise on taking a very very average cover which may have a lot of limitations right so basically two large things that come out of this one is that you should not depend upon your company's insurance because it's not controlled by you healthcare should be controlled by you and second is basically that there is a risk of you not getting a cover when you really want it probably let's say if you are separating from your company or basically retirement so that is that is my answer right ma'am great so sumit uh, i i'll uh, mold the question a little bit on the side of uh, 
and the pricing and designing life insurance and health insurance so you have seen that how you uh, maintain the fine balance uh, because see from companies uh, perspective it has to be profitability right and from customers point of view it has to be like they should get the best cover possible so how how like had been your experience in fine tuning that thing yeah so uh, like pricing any competitive product uh, which is uh, comparable in the market uh, pricing of insurance products is also quite a regress it obviously needs to ensure that cost of claims are covered the expenses that com- companies would incur not just in paying commission but also running operations right and this could be uh, the last level of detail like employee salary infrastructure cost air conditioning cost all of that has to be eventually covered right uh, to the extent that this policy would uh, 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 the attributed of these expenses could be uh, the expenses could be attributed to this product that is that company is pricing and selling right includes it costs and stuff so after building all of that cost and also accounting for profits we eventually uh, would come up with a price and then uh, the next step is to see okay now we have come up with a price uh, but what does uh, our competition offer for something which is relatively comparable i mean the the challenge that we have in india is insurance health insurance products are uh quite varied complicated and not easily comparable right but if you find something comparable in the market what is that other insurer is pricing right uh, charging for it equally then there are other ben- other things uh, which could justify why you could charge higher uh, could be around uh, the network of hospitals that you have the kind of experience that customer have when when uh, when the claim comes and things like sub limits copay which i think we'll talk about in, in a bit so uh, then eventually you decide whether what i'm what i've priced is profitable uh, would sell in the market and is also sustainable uh, while in health insurance uh, you could theoretically reprice an insurance product after a year it generally doesn't uh, is not seen in a good light when you reprice a product tell regulator that we now we we do, we don't find the product is sustainable at current, current pricing and we have to reprice it doesn't work well with any of the stakeholders so the the original ex- exercise that we do is generally quite comprehensive takes about 5 6 months uh, to eventually come up with premiums of insurance products all right thanks so aditya also join us and uh, aditya is a cfa charter holder and has a sebi registered investment advisory so he is uh, like running his own advisory firm and he has been very instrumental in spreading uh, awareness on personal finance and uh, ensure various threads which you can find on his handle and kaushik also joins me as a co-host so kaushik meanwhile if you have any questions to any of the three speakers please feel free to comment so uh, sure, sure, so aditya yeah. like uh, we we started with uh, mahavir and sumit and uh, since you joined late uh, any anything on opening remarks or maybe you want to add as you were listening to both uh, no hi good evening to everybody sorry i was late i had some uh, engagement and i came sorry about that but uh, sorry i was not able to listen to mahavir sir uh but uh, as i say as i have been continuously keep, uh, i keep on posting in the health insurance space basically there is a big disconnect between what the companies are really selling what's happening on the ground uh what's happening on the ground and how claims experience are there for people uh just last week we met uh, uh, mahavir sir uh, sumesh and all of us met and we were discussing how uh, a lot of didn't happen for people this is not to say that uh, health insurance has not helped people health insurance has also helped people but the real point is of uh, the uh, from life insurance where it is pretty clear that you need to buy a term plan and there are standard terms and conditions which every company offers uh, the problem here is that there are multiple conditions and multiple uh, illnesses that uh, you can have here and companies uh, provide so integrated terms just starting off 
in 2020 or uh, 2020 uh i had a very an uh, <coughs> very unpleasant experience and that's when i knew that you don't don't go directly uh, in buying all of these policies because uh, the customer care is not equipped at all to handle uh, any of grievances that you really got so net net uh, today health insurance stands at uh, a it's a sales sales game that many of the advisors many of the uh, companies really do uh, sales ka kaam ho gaya hai wo end customer ko service karne ka companies ke paas koi tarika hi nahi hai us cheez mein invest kar liye because wahan se un logo ko kuch zyada return nahi milta hai sales se zyada return milta hai but you investor uh, what you should be really doing is have a very good uh, advisor uh, you been know uh, mahavir sir is your is an absolutely excellent advisor most of what i have learned is from mahavir sir uh so have an excellent advisor try to buy policies about which we will discuss today or uh, try to buy uh, some policies where there are the least amount of restrictions and terms and speakers also experience conditions and that's on that's where you go from there and then hope that the, the Mahavir sir and Sumit sir, uh, are you able to? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Aditya's yeah. voice is cracking actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Aditya, can can you please uh, drop and connect again? So Mahavir sir, in the meantime, like let's move on to next question. So the the burning question sure. is how much do I need? Right, that is the yeah. burning question. Yeah. So so let's talk about. Since my voice is cracking, so let me let me rejoin. Now I will go back and uh, rejoin again. Okay. Yeah yeah yeah, Prince. So yeah, that's that's a very important question, and I think a lot of people uh, are confused about how do you basically decide what kind of cover uh, do you need. Uh, typically, there are two. There is a twofold answer to this question. One part of the uh, answer is what i'm going to give now and then i'll answer the second part uh largely when you're looking at health insurance as a cover you should look at it from a very very long term point of view uh when you are basically trying to take a cover don't take a cover for your immediate needs but take a cover for the time when you are likely to get most there is a most likely chance of you getting hospitalized so typically someone who's let's say crossing 50 55 is the time when typically uh you know there are chances of getting hospitalized the risk of hospitalization increases right so let's say someone who is 30 today should not buy a cover based on what is the adequate health insurance coverage avail uh, that someone should buy today based on the claims that are happening today so for example today i feel that a 5 lakh cover is very good because typically all the hospitalization i am seeing today is all within 5 lakh so it looks very uh sufficient today but the way you should actually look at it is that from now let's say if i'm 30 year old 30 years old and i'm going to bet say uh, be hospitalized at the age of 60 what is the inflation that this same hospital bill of let's say 3 4 lakhs rupees that is happening today will be at the age of 60 right so typically how we calculate this as patient uh we do a lot of recommendation on our platforms we have a unbiased tool through which we recommend what kind of cover you should buy what kind of riders you should choose what kind of plans you should take and all that uh, in that the cover calculation is basically based on uh, basically looking at the person's current age and then carrying out an inflation of around 6 to 8% over a period of let's say approximately 50 to 55 years of age minimum right so typically if you think that today a 3 lakh cover or a 5 lakh cover is good enough by the time you hit 60 at an inflation of let's say 5% year on year by the time you hit 60 you will typically need a cover of around 15 lakhs per person per adult uh, so that is what we typically suggest for anybody who's crossed 30 uh, that you should plan for the future when you are likely to get hospitalized and buy the cover pre book the cover today why should you not depend on upgrading the cover in the future the answer is very simple is that as soon as a illness kicks in any kind of illness happens in the family Uh, the chances of you getting an upgrade reduces drastically an insurer once you basically say that okay uh, let's say you buy a 5 lakh cover today and let's say at 40 uh, 
uh, there is someone who has diabetes goes to the insurance say that you know what now i want to make this 5 lakh cover into a 1 crore cover or a 50 lakh cover or a 20 lakh cover the chances of an insurer accepting that upgrade is reduces a lot similarly if there is any kind of hospitalization that happens between that 5 lakh cover and when you want to upgrade it later uh, and that hospitalization is for a chronic disease an insurer is likely to reject an upgrade right so two things one is that look at inflation don't look at your uh, look at the sufficient cover for today but for what is going to be sufficient by the time you hit 55 60 and second be aware of the fact that upgrades are not available forever upgrades are available while you are healthy and young and upgrades gradually the chances of getting upgrades reduces as you grow older and let's say if there is any disease then it reduces even further like if you go to our forum we have a, a expert forum on our platform where customers come and ask questions the most popular question is i am 32 years old i have diabetes and i am not getting an upgrade what should i do right that's a very very common question that we get so typically the age of uh, you know falling into a chronic disease has reduced typically 30 has become the new 40 40 has become the new 50 at the same time health insurance is becoming stringent and you getting an upgrade is becoming more and more difficult and hence buying a good quality large cover by the time you hit hit 30 is very important now there was one more fold that i wanted to discuss is that let's say someone is between 20 and 30 let's say 20 to 25 26 at that time there is a chance that a person is very very healthy and they feel that buying a large cover may not be uh, a good idea and probably there is a also an issue of probably being able to pay high premium for such kind of people we generally suggest that you start small let's say buy a 5 lakh cover or a uh, even a lesser cover to start with get enrolled into health insurance start paying premiums on a regular basis and gradually before you hit 30 try to upgrade it to around 15 lakhs per adult so that is the uh, overall answer great thanks so sumit sir any addition to this yeah, and uh, yeah. uh, after that the question would be like uh, what policy do i buy so both the questions to you yeah yeah so uh, i think couple of things uh, uh, maybe because i'm an actuary and i would want to have more uh, you know, i'm more risk averse than other guys so one, one is more factual so the the inflation that mavi talked about uh, we generally see a medical inflation in double digits right so while retail price inflation is uh, rpi or cpi is uh, in is around 68% the medical inflation is generally in double digits so uh, i would arrive at probably a higher cover uh, equally uh, 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 the other thing that that is important to note is uh, buying a high cover now uh, doesn't cost you a lot because if the average claim is around 4 or 5 lakhs which essentially means that if you buy a high cover the addition incremental cover comes at a much much lower cost and anyone can go and uh, check it on the websites available right so it it doesn't cost you a lot to buy a high cover if you were, were to buy now uh, the another point which i wish to bring out which uh, is not directly related with medical cover as it is defined but with uh, health insurance uh, health ex- health care expenditure so one might think that if one has bought a uh, let's say sufficiently high uh, medical cover one is immune towards any financial losses that one could incur in future but there are many things which are typically not covered in in a uh, medical insurance cover from a risk perspective right for example so, uh, so if someone uh, uh, think of a scenario if someone is a surgeon uh, works as a surgeon earns reasonably high uh, income and now uh, because of some medical conditions his hand starts shaking so he can't work as a surgeon but work can work as a medical doctor so he doesn't get hospitalized he uh, and he can't claim for the reduced income that you would have over a period of time and that's a risk that is for which there's no insurance product in india for example at this point in time uh, so there has to be some allowance at some level equally uh, when uh, if you have parents at home uh, uh, 
when they uh, there comes a point in time where they are not hospitalized uh, they have uh, medical conditions uh, but they are not hospitalized uh, they don't need day care they don't need any doctor assistance but they need uh, uh, assistance of a, let's say of a nurse who who wants who needs to be there for 24 by 7 right those risks are still not quite covered there's also an element of uh, one when one gets diagnosed with critical illness uh, of course all the medical cost that is covered uh, that would be incurred would be taken care of but once someone is diagnosed with um, critical illness like cancer chances are that he or she may not be able to work for good 5 6 months and chances are that again he may not go back to the same stressful job right so those bits those risks still remain uncovered uh, despite having a super high medical insurance cover so that was uh, a, a bit of things that i wanted to add uh, just to kind of highlight that having a high medical insurance cover doesn't cover you from all the medical risks in terms of uh, answering the second question in terms of what policies one should buy i think it's it's pretty uh, straightforward go for a comprehensive medical insurance with no room limit and i think uh, mahavir and aditya would also share more details about what that means try and have if if, if there's a possibility try and avoid any copay or deductibles uh and buy a reasonably high sum assured uh it it's also a good idea to buy a base comprehensive policy and buy a super top up again i think we'll delve into it a bit in in a bit uh so uh, super top up essentially is a policy which has a deductible which means that uh a part of the expenses would be borne by either by you or the base cover so buy a base policy buy a super top up uh this is how one should approach uh, the base policy should be ab- absolutely comprehensive whatever you can get uh, uh, is it's a good idea to have it now uh, and buy a super top up for uh, extreme scenarios like blood cancers and stuff so, which would then be taken care of by super top up but i'm sure there's lot to add in terms of what should look into a comprehensive policy and i'll invite mahavir and adit to to add details to it or share their thoughts Yeah, Mahavir, sir, over to you. Yep. So uh, uh, this is a very common question that get, keeps getting asked on social media, uh, which is basically that uh, which policy uh, should one buy? Uh, typically, the answer that I would give is that uh, there are close to two hundred plus uh, plans in the market, and multiply that by around two or three variants per per plan. So there are almost close to six hundred to seven hundred products available in the market. Uh, while this may sound very overwhelming but what this brings uh, to you on table is that you have now a choice to personalize your health insurance like right? so typically the uh, the best mobile phone in my head and the best mobile phone prints in your head and the best uh, let's say a mobile phone in aditya sir's head would be completely different right and sumit would also have a different idea uh, and that is precisely to do with how you want to personalize your cover and how do you want to look at uh, your needs and your profile right so typically uh, when someone uh, you should never ask this question as a, i'm talking to uh, uh, people out here who are as consumers uh, that which is the best health insurance plan the uh, which i should buy you should ask actually a different question you should ask which is the best health insurance for me or which is the most uh suitable health insurance for me and my family's needs right uh for you to be able to understand this you should first sit down and think about uh you know what are your specific needs a write down stuff around what are your uh, key areas that you want to get covers on uh how do you want to look at the mental budget in your mind in terms of premium and largely also look at let's say which are the areas where you are likely to get hospitalized right uh, which which location right so typically if i'm sick i'm in an outskirt uh, of a city uh, am i going to get hospitalized in that same area or probably i will travel to 
let's say the the larger city which is closer to my uh, my city and go and get hospitalized there so typically let's say people who are living in outskirts of delhi uh, they don't get hospitalized in delhi but they get hospitalized uh, they don't get hospitalized in the outskirts they actually come to delhi and get hospitalized a lot of people who live in gujarat actually come to bombay and get hospitalized right so typically and then there are a lot of people in gujarat who don't come to bombay to get hospitalized so typically sitting down and understanding your needs first is very important second is your profile in terms of your budgets and all that is extremely important and third is like i said budget all these three things put together you basically can come out come down to the spec sheet that you typically are looking out in the market ke mujhe kya chahiye right now you should go out in the market and look for plans which match these needs right uh this is not an easy exercise this is slightly a complicated exercise so typically if you have time you can do it yourself or you can look out for a professional advisor in the market who can basically help you do this matching right uh, uh while this may sound like a plug for beshak but we have free tools on our platform which help you do this matching uh, over a span of let's say 3 to 5 minutes right so you typically give details and it will give you a free unbiased uh, recommendation of which are the plans that actually match for your specific needs for your medical history for your uh medical needs and for your kind of budget right so that is what typically you should do don't go by what your neighbor is buying or your colleague is buying just blindly try to basically customize it because customizations and personalizations are more than possible today than ever before uh, thanks mahavi uh tanmay this side so i have one question so for example let's say somebody is working right and his employer is providing the insurance health insurance uh, for him and his family um, that person uh, how should he approach towards insurance so for example let's say i am in mid 30s uh, probably i have a plan to work another 15 20 years so should i wait for i mean my employer is anyways providing it should i wait for 50s to get a personal insurance or should i start thinking of uh, taking insurance from this age itself right so you want me to answer this question or uh, tanmay ma ma vidikan ko yeah yeah okay so basically at the, at the beginning of the session we did uh, touch upon this topic uh, largely the answer to this question is that whenever you are depending on a company health insurance you have to realize that it is completely controlled and linked to your employment with that company right so the cfo of that company or the hr head of that company or the admin head of that company or the hr head of the company actually controls that plan the features of this plan can change every year right so typically is saal mein the benefits could be great and next year if the budgets are low and they can your company or your employer is not doing well the benefits could actually be curtailed down right so healthcare is actually a very personal thing and hence the cover for healthcare should also be very personal and you should have your own policy right you should not basically go and uh, just depend upon your employer's policy that's the first thing the second is uh, when you said mid 30s someone is saying that i am another 15 years i'm going to work so i will wait and then buy a policy that's a very very big risk to take and the assumption is that you're going to when you're taking that risk is basically that you feel that you will not have any disease or any lifestyle issues and hence you will not have to uh, you know uh, you will not have any issues in getting a policy but that's not true actually what's happening today is that uh, 30s are the new 40s today and 40s are the new 50s is what i've already mentioned and because of which what's happening is that chronic diseases are happening earlier than what you days to happen in the past right so taking that risk is basically directly linked to you not getting comprehensive covers that sumit uh, spoke about some time back that if you're looking at comprehensive covers with no copay no deductions no limits you are taking a risk of not getting those kind of covers in the future right so these these two risks one is that the risk of your employer curtailing the cover or you moving on to another company which probably may not have a cover uh, or you taking a sabbatical all those times you will not have a cover the second is largely going to be around you taking the risk that uh, you will not have any major sickness and hence there will always be a, the best comprehensive cover available to you these two assumptions are something that are not worth taking and hence having a corporate cover is very uh, be, uh, having an individual cover beyond a corporate cover is super 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 important yeah mahavir i understood your point uh, just add on to this uh, answer i have one more question so for example let's say one guy right working in a corporate job 
and you told that you know at the age of 40s or 50s probably increasing the limit will be challenging if you get a chronic disease so now think about it just for example somebody want to cover himself for his 50s or 60s and he's definitely doing good corporate job so he probably will be required a very high amount of insurance right so if he goes for 20 or 30 lakhs kind of cover maybe his current employment or the future growth is earning will be enough for taking care of 20 30 lakhs right so if let's say somebody wants to go for a really big amount looking at his current earning and everything in that sense the premium is also going to be high so i mean there is always a dilemma right because uh sometimes mind think that okay uh 20 years down the line 30 lakhs if i need to take a insurance is 30 lakh insurance do i need or i need a two crore insurance right and then the other question is that if i go for a two crore insurance my premium will goes up and my employer is anyways giving me very good insurance so that dilemma how to how to think rationally if you can help me to understand can i come in yeah so uh, we can take it yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, the couple of things here right so uh, one uh, while one is expected to get hospital is more likely to get hospitalized in 50 there is no reason to discard the fact that one could get hospitalized tomorrow right and for for something which which is as severe as cancer that's one second uh, the cover offered by most employers is sub 5 lakhs if 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 my understanding is right and mahavir you could correct me there so 5 lakh cover is what ayushman bharat would offer you offer to the lower 50 percentile of of this population of this country right so it's not a cover that the cover and the premium is not substantial to even think about it so if i if i could put it simple just uh, ignore the fact that you have a medical insurance from your employer and buy as if you did not have because of reasons that mahavir mentioned because of reasons that things could change tomorrow and also there are subtle nuances like the waiting period for pre existing disease or waiting period for maternity cover right so uh, those start coming in, kicking in only when you buy a retail policy so some some diseases can only be taken care can only be covered after one year or if there are pre existing conditions they will only be only covered after four years so the clock starts ticking only when you buy retail cover and the later that you uh, you buy the less lesser chances that uh, uh, or higher the chances that when you were to claim for those conditions you may not be uh, allowed to claim for it in in my personal experience right when i quit job i had a medical cover i did not have an individual cover uh, and uh, uh, my baby was already on her, on her way to come to this world right i could not avail med- maternity benefit <laughs> or maternity cover from, a, from because my group insurance got terminated it did, could not get ported to a retail policy and retail policy would have typically have a waiting period of couple of years for a maternity benefit right so situation these edge cases would also mean would just uh, help you demonstrate the value of health insurance that brings in and and last pre- last bit really right so while it, there could be a perception that higher cover would cost you significantly higher uh, i would urge uh, everyone to do a, a quick exercise maybe after the space look for a let's say 1 crore super top up plan with a deductible of 10 lakhs uh, and you would be amazed by the amount of premium it would have it's it, even for a family of 3 or 4 people it would be less than 5000 Yeah, so with one more question, uh, last question from my side, uh, that uh, what is the function of premium? For example, what is the function of uh, cover? Is it your current earning can be a factor, or is it only a look at the expenses I gonna incur if I gonna hospitalize and adding the inflations? So, uh, is the current earning can also be a factor of your cover? I just wanted to understand your take. Yeah, I mean affordability would come in, right? Uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, in terms of cover, right? Uh, my argument always is uh, that those who get five lakh five lakh cover as part of Ayushman Bharat, if they were to buy five lakh cover by themselves, would they be able to afford it? The answer is most likely no. uh do they need the cover the answer is yes right so while affordability is one of the factors 
uh, and it's a, it could be a practical consideration. I would look for uh, start from what is that you need. And if affordability becomes a concern, then of course you start with a lower. Maybe uh, another point, I think, to summarize some of it, right? So people tend to also compare term insurance and health insurance, which I think are not quite comparable. Uh, term insurance, uh, the two major things. One is, of course, term insurance is a lot more simple. But term insurance also has a fixed benefit. So regardless of how you die, how much, uh, when you die, and how much is the financial burden that your family would have, you are going to get the exact same amount that you have co- you were covered for. In health insurance, you only get covered for what you incurred. Right? So w- there, uh, what you incurred and what was also covered. So that's one subtle difference. So one is a fixed benefit product, uh, that is indemnity, which means it would cover for the losses, actual losses that you had. And to make things simple for a larger audience, a term insurance is more like buying a ticket in a train. Uh, you bought a ticket in a train, but there's no add-ons to it, no uh, complexities around it. You go, occupy your seat, travel, and you're done. Uh, buying a health insurance is more like buying a ticket in, uh, in an Indigo, right? Uh, what you get is uh, the price that you pay, you get a seat, a uh, middle seat, in one of the rows is what you would typically get. But if you want a window seat, you need to pay more. If you want a seat with as a leg space, you can need to pay more. If you want meals, you need to pay more. And the complication starts in terms of identifying what you need and how to avail those additional benefits. And when the time of com- claim comes, uh, uh, the complexity further increases. Right? So if, if you are an average guy who would, uh, is happy with middle seat, uh, and uh, has no frills, would a healthy guy would claim for the uh, very basic stuffs, you are just fine. But everything else would requ- would typically require a lot of assistance because of the complexity that we have in health insurance setting as it, at this point in time. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, Smith, you said that one crore coverage can be... Prince, I can't hear you. Uh, if you are speaking, I can't hear you. Can I step in? Yes, Suruji. Uh, Suruji, go ahead. If you have any questions, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so I have one question. Either Mahavir or Subit can respond on that, please. Uh, I have one question. I recently, uh, last year, I bought one medical uh, health insurance policy. So while preming, uh, paying the premium this year, in uh, this month only, I noticed that the medical insurance premium has increased for that policy. It is a new policy on which I haven't done any claim yet, right? In spite of that, the premium has gone a bit uh, higher. So apart from medical inflation, right, uh, what are the other factors uh, which contribute to higher premium for me, uh, right, on that new policy? It just being the second year of the policy. Right. Uh, uh, apart from this question, one more question I have is uh, uh, if the medical inflation is factored in the premium, uh, doesn't the medical inflation should also be factored in the cover as well? Because the, if the companies are charging us more for the premium, shouldn't the cover also go go should go up, uh, proportionate to that inflation? Avi, do you want to go first? And maybe then maybe... Yeah, sure, sure. sure, sure. So uh, there are two parts to this question. One is that uh, I bought this policy uh, just last year and I'm not making you know any change in my premium and why should there be any hike uh, there could be multiple reasons for that one of it it could be that uh, most of the insurers charge premiums based on age labs right so there are different age labs so typically there could be a 25 to 30 30 31 to 35 36 to 40 that kind of age lab and there is a chance that you move from one age lab to another age lab that could be one reason the second reason is the insurer basically has seen larger claims, right? So the average claims that they are seeing, if that increases, proportionately, they will have to also look at increasing premium. So that is somehow linked to inflation, like you rightly said. But typically, it is also about their view about how much percentage of the sum insured you're likely to utilize if there is a claim over a period of time, right? So typically, let's say when I'm charging for like Sumit mentioned in the beginning that a 10 lakh cover uh, uh, if it costs X, a 20 lakh cover does not co- cost 2X. The reason is that your it, in health insurance premiums are not charged based on purely based on some insured, but largely based on the estimate that an insurer has over utilization that how, my, uh, how much are you likely to claim, right? 
So insurers keep calculating this on a year on year basis and at a portfolio level an insurer could change premiums, right? Saying that for everybody uh, 35 to 40, I'm changing premiums by above by 5%, 10%, whatever, right? Post pandemic, there has been a very large spike in insurance premium increase, probably because insurers have taken uh, a pandemic, which happened once, which is a one in a hundred year kind of an event into cognizance when they reprice the product, right? So typically every people saw premiums in specifically for senior citizens rising even at 60, 70, 75% uh, over years. So that is uh, another area which actually uh, insurers start started factoring because uh, pre-pandemic insurers had not priced such kind of an event where the entire family could get hospitalized, right? Pandemic was the first time that an insurer would have actually factored saying that there could be pandemics and the entire family could be in the hospital and the entire sum insured could get utilized, right? So those things actually started getting factored very recently after the pandemic. Uh, there was one more question, uh, Suruchi, that you asked. I actually... Uh, Missed, uh, yes, I, I asked that uh, there's suppose a cover is there, right? Suppose I've taken an X amount yeah. of cover, right? And now the premium is increasing for that you because of the factors you have mentioned, right? So right. Uh, I'm saying that if the inflation is factored in the premium, why not yeah. the, com yeah. uh, the, uh, the companies factor the inflation in the cover right. also for the benefit of the customers, right? It should be two, it should be not be one sided always, yes. it should be yes. both ways, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Richie, so the answer to that question is what I mentioned with that insurers don't charge you premium based on some insured solely but charge based on what is that their view about the utilization that you will have so it is largely about that so typically uh, let's say like i said that a 10 lakh cover and a 20 lakh cover are not 2x the reason for that is that an insurer knows that today if the average claims are let's say 2 lakh rupees everything above 2 lakh rupees is basically yeah, something that is like that. a bonus premium Right? Yes, I so that's why that from your first answer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that is the yeah, reason inflation answer. would not. Yeah, inflation would not be the reason why uh, premiums uh, your sum insured would increase. So as a as a customer, then right, as a customer, then we need to review our policies, right, uh, after every periodic intervals to see whether the cover is sufficient for the family uh, as a whole yeah. or not, right? Absolutely, absolutely. That is a uh, that is a very important thing. And uh, before you hit, uh, let's say thirty mm -hmm. thirty five. You should take a cover which is the maximum no, available and hit, maximum. I've already hit that 30, more than 35 actually. Yeah, so you should okay. buy the cover that you can hide. That is, that is, uh, you should look at an outlook of almost like uh, what is okay. the cover that you need at 55 mm. that you should buy okay. now because if there is any illness that triggers, then mm. upgrades become very difficult. One more important point that I wanted to add to this is that uh, premiums also increase. Mm based on which kind of insurer you are basically buying a policy from an insurer which has a lot of senior citizens in their policy and are not able to attract younger population will have a higher spike in premiums compared to an insurer which is able to attract younger population into their uh, into their kitty right because what happens is that insurance is a a lot of averaging happens happens in insurance and typically if your book is of people who are a lot of people are old and uh, typically they're not able to add young people in the population of the people that the insurer is covering. The premiums for those kind of insurers will spike much higher than an insurer which is being able to probably distribute and attract much younger population. So that's also something that is happening. So people who have insurance from PSU insurers today are actually uh, witnessing this because PSU insurers and their distributors typically are not today being able to attract the younger population. That is an example. Okay, thank you so much. Well, we have one last question. So, uh, now uh, we have a family floater plan, right? The, uh, the, uh, we have our son also in that plan. Say tomorrow, after a few years, when he start working, right, he will have a uh, he will have his own individual uh, health insurance plans. So, is there a way to move out the kid from the plan one one he is capable to take care of his own health needs, right? As Absolutely. a as a right. So, uh, do we get a benefit of that uh, uh, if we keep the same policy, paying the same premium, or the premium will reduce in that case? Yeah, so typically once your uh, your kid is above, let's say, 25, anyways, an insurer will stop con uh, uh, considering that uh, your kid as a child in the policy because the definition of child typically is that 
the person is above if he should be below 25 years of age so up to 25 you can cover a child in the policy your son or your daughter in the policy beyond 25 you will any days have to decouple and buy an individual policy for your child uh your answer relate there will be a clean migration so typically an insurer will decouple the individual have a separate policy and the the credits for all the number of years of premium that has been paid and the waiting periods would continue so it's not that you have to start afresh right so if you go with the same insurer even if you go with a new insurer you can do a portability uh uh premium wise uh, yes so typically as you grow older your premiums are going to rise so uh, if you uh, decouple and have a separate policy for your uh, child uh, that will not meaning you should not worry about that because you today should focus on getting a high cover uh, with a with a good insurer uh, and uh, not worry about premiums premiums are anyways dynamic based on age and typically the book of the insurer so that will play on its own right you you should focus on how you can ensure that you have a adequate cover for yourself and once your child gets a separate cover and you have your own cover how do you ensure that that cover is inflation proof till you hit let's say 60 okay thank you yeah. so much yeah so just a couple of thoughts there uh, uh, so if, if uh, at uh, in insurer's office there are people like me sitting who uh, would review uh, a performance of a product on a year on year basis right so if you bought a por- particular policy from an insurer x they would see how does the performance look like uh, in terms of the claims ratio that they had estimated and what it turned out in in reality by age bands right so and if it looks like some if there is something alarming they would go ahead and change the premiums the equally opposite part of it let's say uh, this happens at a cohort level right which means that if there's a if they see something wrong in in the age bracket of let's say 35 to 40 they would increase premium for 35 to 40 and not necessarily touch other age bands equally let's say if you have made a claim right uh, uh, that would not change your premium so just because you made a claim uh, your premium would not change which is something i think equally comforting in that sense yeah yeah got it so much thank you so much thank you ma'am hey guys uh, sorry for the twitter glitches even aditya was unable to speak and uh, i guess i was also not audible to any one of you so can 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 you please confirm avir am i audible to you yes you are yes yes absolutely okay right. sumit had sumit had completed the answering uh, uh, suruchi or uh, he was yet to add something more no, to that's, it that's all i that's all i that's all oh, i wanted okay. to add yeah. oh aditya aditya are you able to speak now yes i am able to hear you can you able to are you able to hear me yes yes we all can so aditya you yeah. can go and then we once again uh, come to mavir and sumit yeah no no uh, what yeah so i had a point that somebody asked uh, asked right that uh, what is the best insurance policy to buy uh, i i tell this to people across advisory there is no best mutual fund there is no best insurance policy you have to do what is right for you uh, the best insurance policy in terms of features uh, which has no copay which has no room rent limit uh, which has no uh, sub limits on various diseases you will find may be very expensive and you cannot afford to buy that insurance policy so uh, so it really depends on you what is the uh, risk uh, risk uh, risk return ratio that you need to really have if you have ample amount of cushion in terms of money that you have got then you should buy the uh, policy which has least amounts of restrictions and as time really goes on uh, you you will find that uh, with uh, age going up you will find that the premiums continue to keep moving up and most of the senior people who are above 45 50 will not tend to uh, be able to afford those policies because premiums continue to remain very expensive for those policies so net net you have there's nothing known as best the first point the second point is as sumit sumit repeatedly said uh, i will give you i have tweeted about this uh, hundreds of times a 1 crore cover for a 30 year old uh built in a way where you build a 10 lakh rupee base policy and build a 90 lakh super top up 
is just 10 to 11000 rupees depending on what kind of an insurer that you insure with uh, but that's not very very expensive people think that a 1 crore cover would be very difficult very expensive to buy but it is very very cheap of course this premium will continue to keep rising as time goes on as age goes on and as the premium uh, as the insurer uh, does take uh, hikes in insurance premiums however uh, it is not very expensive 11000 rupees is not too expensive and the other point that i wanted to bring out here is rather than buying a pure play one cr cover uh, you should be looking at a 10 lakh plus 90 lakh super top up that's an effective effectively cheaper way to buy a policy for a 30 year old if you try to split this premium up you will find that uh, a one cr policy will cost you anywhere between 15 to 16000 rupees where uh, whereas if you split this uh, with 10 lakh base and 90 lakh super top up you will find that uh, you can do it in 10000 rupees or 11000 rupees so try to split this up and uh, as i as mahavir sir already said that start with a 5 lakh policy i will try to be more cautious uh, than him uh, of course he is the guru here but uh, i will always i always tell anyone who approaches me try to at least have a 10 lakh rupee cover because with covid coming in you never know what happens and you never know the hospitalization uh, so as you know prince that uh, you also host shreya shah who is a dietitian and we are already seeing that people are getting diabetes in the age of 30s and 40s uh, they are already turning pre diabetic because any lack of uh, lack of any uh, l- lack of any exercises and a very sedentary life so i will su- suggest that those who are uh, those who are trying to uh, wait for their covers to come about in 30s 40s diseases are coming very very fast first point second point is uh, don't don't really uh, rely on your insure uh, on your employer because that cover i have already seen varies between 3 to 5 lakh rupees and point number 1 is 3 to 5 lakh rupees in today's world is absolutely nothing so net net my point is that uh, you have to be very circumspect you have to invest i tell all of my clients before you start to invest in the equity markets buy insurance and health insurance should be the number one investment that you really do start with small i will uh, mahavir sir says 5 uh, i agree with him but a uh, 10 is better and then you build on from there and a 90 lakh super top up with a 10 lakh deductible for a 30 year old is just available for 1000 rupees uh, it is based on the assumption that the insurer is saying that you will not be using this type of cover as they have seen the average claims but my point really is this will help you uh, 30 40 years down the line when you really need a medical cover so so that's how you should be approaching health insurance uh, is my limited point great thanks so sumit uh, nisha sangvi uh, she has a question for you she is asking how does uh, reinsurance work for health insurance uh, uh, in most cases uh, okay so maybe first what is reinsurer just so that for, for wider audience uh reinsurers are companies which insure insurance companies uh in a medical insurance setting you do not see a lot of reinsurance getting involved because the cover size are typically very small and insurance companies can typically bear those claims right uh but reinsurers tend to get involved in in a critical illness type of cover when the cover could be uh, really high up crore or, or two crore or maybe three crores even higher than that and those are uh, relatively lesser uh, uh, probability scenarios so that's where reinsurers come in bringing their global expertise and also bring also provide support to insurers uh, to be able to write higher sum assured covers and if the claim comes uh, they would also pay a part of the claims so that's i i think given the audience this is where i would just stop uh, happy to answer any specific questions uh, on dm or otherwise right so sumit uh, like uh, initially you you spoke about copay thing right can you uh, explain uh, what exactly it is and how we need to be cautious about it yeah so co- think of copay as basically uh, a situation uh, if there is a claim Uh, and if there is a copay arrangement, which means that 
some part of the expenses would be borne by me and some part of the expenses uh, and remaining would be borne borne by uh, uh, the insurer so think uh, think of copay as uh, if there is a copay of 20% and if there is a claim of let's say 1 lakh 20000 goes from my pocket 80000 is what insurer pays uh, the couple of many reasons for doing it uh, one of the reasons which is more from a policy holder perspective is that uh, this uh, would mean uh, uh, there is a skin in the game because there could be situations where you are making claim just because you don't have to pay from the pocket right? so insurers would try and avoid such situations and especially when the newer covers that they are offering uh, the covers which uh, which are uh, which you would go only if it's insured otherwise you would not avail for them a uh, few years back uh, regulator wanted insurers to cover eight modern treatment methods and they were all they were they were already covered uh, those conditions were already covered in some form or shape but those treatment methods were not covered right so in situations like these uh, for example one of them was let's say immunotherapy so cancer by the way was already covered uh, through chemotherapy but regulator also wanted to cover immunotherapy now this is a uh, slightly expensive uh, if uh, assuming this is slightly expensive wa- way of treatment treating cancer uh, and more convenient you as a policy holder would go for it right but uh, and you would not have gone for it if insurer w- wasn't covering it and you would have been fine with chemotherapy so to kind of avoid those behaviors uh, insurer would go for a copay saying okay uh, you want to do immunotherapy as opposed to chemotherapy great go ahead but you also pay 20% from your pocket all right fair enough so we we have some speakers uh, one by one we take their questions and uh, like for our attendees the session uh, the previous session was also recorded and this is also getting recorded so both the recordings i'll be placing over my youtube channel so some people were asking in the comments so for them you can uh, anyway like all my spaces are record the recorded spaces are uploaded over youtube channel and the link to which i have pinned to this spaces so ankush you can quickly unmute and ask your question yeah am i audible yeah go ahead uh, thank you thank you for the opportunity thank you for all people in advance for answering my questions i am looking for a maternity health cover for my sister uh, this is basic cover and uh, i'm seeing that there is only 1 lakh or 2 lakh cover is available for maternity given the inflation and the costs associated with maternity what should uh, there there should be some high coverage policies but i couldn't find any any do you have any idea of why this is limited or is this the wrong conception at my end thank you um Aditi you can you can answer it Pavir sir Sumit sir Aditi anyone of you Yeah, yeah. sure 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 so uh, typically uh, uh, the way an insurer would look at a maternity expense uh, largely is insurance as a concept basically covers for unknown risks right uh, maternity as a as a concept is something which is typically not an unknown risk it is a known benefit that's why if you see the policy will call it maternity benefit right uh, insurers basically look at uh, expenses across the country and they will basically look at something which is reasonable according to them and put a limitation on it it is also so that the price of the product that they are basically coming out in the market is also controlled and affordable right so putting these things into perspective uh, typically an insurer who provides maternity largely provide you are right uh, when you say that uh, most of the insurers provide you a limitation on maternity cover or of around the lakh uh, max right there are insurers who provide even lesser cover on maternity uh, to summarize what i have said just said it is largely to do with two things one is that their own outlook of what is the reasonable amount of cover that a person needs when they want to get a uh, um, 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 maternity expenses for maternity expenses and second is to control the pricing because uh, anything that is a new benefit will also have a repercussion on pricing uh i get your point but still uh, 
given the pricing in the market and the reality on ground, one lakh is too less for any maternity benefit these days in any, even in non-metros, as per my experience. And uh, given that, uh, there, is there any option like uh, way we are of this limit or something like that? Uh, because I could yeah. see some option in uh, some policy like fidelity, but it is withdraw. It has been withdrawn. It is no, no longer active or something like that. So yeah. So typically, you see the reason why it is like that is because uh, it is a it is a clear cut. Uh, uh, a claim for an insurer, right? Meaning you are right now looking at insurance very differently from how I would suggest to look at insurance is that uh, insurance should be look at, looked at largely from a point of view of covering unknown risks, right? Wherever an insurer has to cover a predictable risk, the premiums of it will be very high or there will be limitations because they need to keep the pricing in control, right? So typically, let's say, similarly, if you look at covers for OPD, treatment like doctor routine expenses where you know physician expenses are covered or let's say regular consultation is covered uh, the reason why these kind of products have larger premiums or basically have limitations is because it is a predictable risk for an insurer and largely insurers are better masters of covering unknown risks wherever there is a benefit cover that they are providing whether the chances of claiming are higher the premiums would be higher or there will be limitations because they know for a fact that this is going to get claimed. Okay. Practically, there is no option apart from this one. That's what you're saying. Yes. So, because... so uh, I, if I may suggest here, uh, mm -hmm. maternity is better covered under the employer insurance since that's a group policy. But Mahavir sir is absolutely bang on. Uh, insurers will try to cover you only for instances where there is unforeseen hospitalization. Uh, in events where uh, insurers see a short, short uh, claim coming up, they will tend to always uh, try to uh, limit the claim that you can really get. But if you have a, if you have, if uh, your sister really has a uh, employer health insurance, uh, uh, unfortunately, then there, yeah, unfortunately, don't have. She is a self-employed and don't have any cover from uh, employee benefits or something like that. Second thing is, uh, we are not into, uh, even not married, but for future, we are planning for the pregnancy, if any case, down the line, five to seven years or something like that. But still, that's a point that I want to look for in the important, because uh, I have faced uh, multiple cases in my within my family of maternity costs going however. That's why I was looking for that one. But uh, given that uh, it doesn't make any sense apart from other things, uh, to go for it as such. Uh, I do understand the risk associated here, but still, a maternity would have been better. If uh, given an option to pay a copay or something like that, it would have been better at least. That's what my opinion would be. I mean, uh, can I add uh, a bit? I mean, I'd go slightly mathematical here, but I think that would bring out the point, uh, that would further cement what Mahavir and Aditya were trying to add. So yeah. the, the way insurer would price for any product, right, be it health, life or whatever, is essentially what is the amount of claim they are going to pay and what multiplied by what is the chance of that claim happening. So for example, if uh, uh, a bypass surgery costs 3 lakhs and there's a 1% chance of happening that in this year, the premium becomes 3 lakhs into 1 person, person that is 3,000, right? In case of maternity, the probability is near 100%, right? So if you want another additional cover of 1 lakh, insurer might as well end up charging you another 1 lakh, which doesn't help you in any way, right? So, and equally, I mean, that's, that's one part, which basically is a very pure mathematical answer of why... Uh, insurer wouldn't have a maternity cover higher than 1 lakh because your premium which was about 15,000 would suddenly become 1 lakh 50,000 or become let's say 50,000 and it doesn't then start it doesn't make sense after that yeah, I, I have a question uh, for Aditya you explained a few minutes back about uh, there are many, many speakers waiting and I have to wrap up by uh, uh, I mean, uh, ten thirty. So we take them first, and in the end, uh, we we take your question. And of course, uh, second round will will allow in some time if time permits. So Chirag, I would request speakers to ask their questions quickly. Yeah, Chirag, go ahead, please. 
thanks for the opportunity uh, so my question is primarily around modern treatments uh, so something i was reading that irdi had mandated modern treatments to be included in some of the health insurances however some insurance companies uh, did a work around where they added certain sublimits to certain type of treatments so as a 30 35 year old individual if i am looking to buy a new health insurance should modern treatment coverage be one of the criteria that i should be checking as part of my evaluation given that maybe in 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 10 15 years down the line some of these treatments might become more active uh, rather than taking some of the conventional treatments so what are your thoughts around that Uh, maybe i can go first uh, i would think that modern treatment methods are still evolving but if you're looking from long term perspective uh, and by the way all insurers would cover is the question of uh, sublimits and copays and things around that right, right so i think uh, in my view uh, i would uh, recommend that you factor them as one of the uh, conditions when you're identifying your insurance product because when some of these are quite interesting like immunotherapy oral oral uh, there's an uh, oral treatment oral cancer, chemotherapy oh, oral chemotherapy and equally then uh, uh, there is something around uh, stem cell therapy right so th- those would become quite uh, those are still evolving not just in let's say india but also overseas right so we do not know how useful they would become but if they would become useful uh, they're likely to become useful that's the reason why a regulator also is pushing for them right so i would say say that put some weightage uh, in when you're deciding for a health insurance policies on modern treatment methods but those shouldn't be the only factors that you should you're looking at all right all right yeah just to add uh, the robotic uh, let's say for example you're looking at robotic surgeries right? like a robotic spine surgery uh, we've done an article on this on our website and it has details about what is the cost of surgeries how uh, limits on modern treatments can impact you and all that <clears throat> probably i'll put it as a link here if i if i can do that uh, but uh, typically having a limit for modern treatments is something which is a red flag in my view uh, if you are today uh, a young and healthy individual and you have a choice and everything else being equal ensure that modern treatment does not have a limitation because going in the future like what sumit mentioned it is going to become more and more relevant uh, robotic surgeries surgeries that happen <clears throat> uh, using oral oral treatment and all this is going to become more and more relevant uh, for people today uh, i have a friend who's going through a cancer treatment and uh, exactly same immunotherapy is what uh, she is actually uh, going through right and each time uh, that session happens it costs around 1 and 1/2 2 lakh rupees right the overall treatment is going to cost to close to around 12 13 lakh rupees right minimum right and it will all depend upon how the patient reacts and all that so having a limitation on modern treatment given all things are equal and you have a choice uh, is something which is a red flag in my point of view don't go for a policy which has a, a modern treatment limit all comprehensive policies otherwise don't have a limit so why do you have a limit for modern treatment right can, can i add some nuance to it uh, uh, so when modern treatment methods were made mandatory uh, in 2008 9 time uh, none of the insurers had any data as to what it would cost and how many people would avail for it right so hence they were they started by putting controls around it putting sublimits putting uh, uh, copay around it and the reason why i can say this quite confidently is because when this was made mandatory by regulator uh, i realized there is an opportunity because like an independent consultant that i was then no no insurer had any history no insurer had any data around it right so i did an analysis which in turn i sold to some of the insurers for pricing those modern treatment methods so i my so my guess is over a period of time when insurers start having more and more data this would become liberal and equally regulator and come back saying okay you started with sublimits but it's time to remove those sublimits so if there if you find policies where you do not have sublimits of course go for them 
but if that's a common trend uh, i think uh, you should be rest assured that this will eventually be taken care of thank okay. you so much so next is sachin nanda and then anupam yeah sachin you can quickly unmute and ask your question please थैंक यू सर सर मेरा क्वेश्चन एक्चुअली टर्म इंश्योरेंस से रिलेटेड है मेरे को एक्चुअली जानना है कि मैंने टर्म इंश्योरेंस लिया है और जैसे भी उनकी गाइडलाइंस थी जैसे उनकी इंस्ट्रक्शन थी मैंने अपना मेडिकल भी करवाया जैसे भी उन्होंने जहाँ भी करा सब कुछ करा सब उनकी फॉर्मेलिटीज पूरी करी मैंने दो साल तीन साल प्रीमियम दिया अनफॉर्चुनेटली अगर कुछ मेरे साथ हो जाता है तो कुछ है कैसे के कारण हो सकते हैं कि कंपनी मेरे को मेरा क्लेम रिजेक्ट कर दे या क्लेम घटा दे और या फिर ऐसी कोई आई की गाइडलाइन है कि जिससे कि आप दो साल या तीन साल आप प्रीमियम दे देते हैं तो कंपनी डिनाई नहीं कर सकती आपको क्लेम देने से एनीवन मावीर सुमित आदित्य आई कैन गो सो मेरे को मावीर ओके सो सचिन आईडी का ऐसा रूल है आई थिंक लाइफ में चार साल का है या दो साल थ्री इयर्स के बाद अगर आपने फ्रॉड नहीं किया है एज एन आपने कुछ मिस इन्फॉर्मेशन नहीं दिया है अपने प्रपोजल फॉर्म में तो आपका क्लेम टिपिकली रिजेक्ट नहीं होगा तो अगर आप मेडिकल कंडीशन मेडिकल चेकअप हुआ था अंडर किया था आपने जो प्रपोजल फॉर्म में जो सही इन्फॉर्मेशन जो इन्फॉर्मेशन मांगा था वो पूरा राइट लेवल पे आपने डिस्कलोज किया है और तीन साल हो गए हैं तो आपको कोई चिंता करने की जरूरत नहीं है सो बेसिकली और लाइफ इंश्योरेंस में तो अगर लाइफ इंश्योरेंस काफी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड है अगर आपने जो इन्फॉर्मेशन प्रपोजल फॉर्म में है वो दिया है तो आपको क्लेम मिलेगा ही एक्सट्रीम केसेस हैं सुसाइड है फर्स्ट ईयर में या फिर आपने ड्रग अब्यूज या एल्कोहल अब्यूज किया है सो दो सिचुएशन माइट गेट रेस्ट्रिक्टेड बट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट वो सब मिलता है इसमें कवर मिलता है राइट जस्ट टू एड बेसिकली ये सेक्शन 45 करके एक इंश्योरेंस एक्ट में नया इंट्रोड्यूस हुआ है अबाउट सेवन एट इयर्स अको वेन द इंश्योरेंस एक्ट वॉज अपडेटेड जिसके हिसाब से इफ आपका कोई भी क्लेम है जो आपने तीन साल के बाद हो रहा है इन लाइफ इंश्योरेंस इंश्योरेंस कंपनी के नॉट रिजेक्टेड इंक्लूडिंग फॉर फ्रॉड राइट इट इज वेरी क्लियर दैट इंश्योरेंस कंपनी कैन नॉट रिजेक्टेड इन रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ वॉट वॉज द डेक्लेशन how it was done an insurer insurance company has only has a 3 year window to do whatever investigations it want to do right this is what is in the act right in reality insurers <clears throat> go beyond this and actually do investigations for cases uh, for even cases jahan pe customer ne 3 saal ki zyada premium pay kiya hai jo actually uh, on paper legal nahi hai but insurance companies ye karti hai ki 3 saal ke upar ka jo bhi Uh, लोगों ने प्रीमियम पे किया है उसके केस में भी इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज इन्वेस्टिगेशन कर रही है आपको आपकी नॉमिनी को बहुत अच्छे से इसके बारे में एजुकेट करना है कि एक बार तीन साल का प्रीमियम हो गया पे करके उसके बाद पूरा राइट है फॉर द कस्टमर एंड द नॉमिनी ऑफ द कस्टमर इन द स्पेसिफिक केस टू गेट द क्लेम राइट ये एडुकेट करना बहुत जरूरी है नॉमिनी को के थ्री ईयर्स के बाद इंश्योरेंस कंपनी के नॉट हैव एनी रीजन टू रिजेक्ट अ क्लेम इज the law of the land right <clears throat> uh only thing that you should worry about is the first three years so first three years mein jo sumit ne bola wo bahut clear hai ki aapko declarations ke upar bahut zyada dhyan rakhna hai ki aapne sare jo declarations diye wo ekdam detailed hai aur koi bhi apni cheez miss nahi ki aapke declarations mein aapne sare questions khud pad ke acche se answer kiye hai agar wo hai to aapko koi bhi darne ki zarurat nahi hai aapko 3 saal ke within bhi aapko claim milne wala hai और उसके बियॉन्ड भी क्लियर मिलने वाला है थैंक्स सचिन सो अनुपम यू कैन क्विकली अनम्यूट एंड आस्क योर क्वेश्चन प्लीज हाय सर थैंक्स फॉर द अपॉर्चुनिटी व्हाट आई वांटेड टू आस्क वॉच मोर रिगार्डिंग मेंटल हेल्थ एंड इंश्योरेंस सो हाउ डू हाउ कैन वी चूज एंड हाउ व्हाट इज द स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट बिकॉज़ अ लॉट ऑफ आई डोंट थिंक आई हैव आई वाज ट्राइंग टू सर्च so there are holistic plans uh, that are giving lifestyle changes and everything insurers like aditya billa health was giving it but when i for mental health or people who are suffering from them i didn't uh, quite find it the the right policies to say like what should be our starting point sir if anyone can help me in that i can answer that question so <clears throat> basically uh, as per iid regulations mental health is completely supposed to be covered under health insurance 
insurance companies cannot put a exclusion on a mental health but like we discussed in the beginning of this session health insurance largely covers hospitalization expenses right so mental health related also it will only cover expenses which are related to hospitalization and not outside hospitalization so typically expenses related to regular therapy and uh, medication all that typically most of the policies in india do not cover right that is one second it is very important to understand that <clears throat> in india data is not available on mental health and mental health expenses and hence if there is a mental health case that a person already has a mental health issue or a mental illness or has a history of mental illness in that case insurers are paranoid and they will not provide insurance so this is one more reason to not delay your health insurance if you are waiting and you are depending on your company's insurance is that today if you go to any insurer and even say that i have taken i have had anxiety issues about 3 years ago or i have taken pills for 3 days or 5 days uh, insurers clearly are rejecting such proposals right so two important things one is entry after mental illness today is quite difficult to quite tricky and you'll need a really skillful advisor to negotiate for you and get a cover for you so it's it's something that you should avoid as a situation second is after you have bought the policy mental illness is covered but it is only covered for hospitalization expenses largely and not for regular expenses like routine expenses Uh, uh, just to quickly, yeah, yeah, you someone is saying sorry. Yeah, Anubham, quickly ask. Yeah, there are no questions. We have limited speakers. Hai. Quickly ask your question, please. Yeah, just a add-on question. Hai. Sir, as you have said, that mental illness hospitalization is necessary. But what if hospitalization is not there? And there are quite good diseases that are uh, without hospitalization detected in the care. So is there no? Yeah, so it's not covered. Anubham, is there no? Meaning, IRDI may be. Nahin, nahin. रेगुलेटर ने भी कुछ नहीं करा इसमें हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन रिस्क कवर करता है हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस तो एनीथिंग रिलेटेड टू हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन इज ओनली गेटिंग कवर टुडे लार्जली एंड अदर एक्सपेंसेस थेरेपी रिलेटेड और आपने जो भी बोला कि लेजिट कोई मेंटल इलनेस है लाइक लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल मुझे एक फिजिकल इलनेस है जिसके लिए हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन जरूरत नहीं है तो उसके लिए भी हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस कवर नहीं करता सिमिलरली जब मेंटल इलनेस होती है और उसके लिए हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन नहीं होती है तो वो भी कवर नहीं करता तो टिपिकली ये जो पॉलिसी है हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस ये लार्जली हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन रिस्क कवर करता है ओके सर थैंक यू अनुपम सो मिस्टर वाई के यू कैन क्विकली अनम्यूट एंड आस्क योर क्वेश्चन हेलो सर जी बोलो एक्चुअली आई वांट टू बाय अ न्यू हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस so like from where i should buy the health insurance from like uh, direct from the health insurance company or third party like maybe more policy bazaar uh, i can answer on behalf of others uh, i think so if you if you are asking this question you probably need an advisor uh, mahavir would not plug himself so i'll plug him uh, log on to beshak.org <laughs> uh, and and maybe just have a chat with one of their advisors okay it's it's free doesn't cost anything they do not spam uh, and, and i would say that is more true for health insurance as opposed to life 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 insurance term insurance straight forward but health uh, even uh, people who are in insurance industry uh, tend to struggle with uh, identifying the right policies for themselves and then eventually also getting claims approved thanks bhai ke so satish mr satish you can uh, go next hello ji good evening everyone hello ji boliye suna sun pa rahe hain hum aaj mujhe apne 20 saal ke bete ke liye health insurance policy chahiye thi jo ki student hai ek to main janna cha raha tha ki is it right age for health insurance for him uh health insurance ka straight forward rule hai jab se aap paida hue hai jab tak aur jab tak ho tab tak chahiye oh. unless of course you can uh pay for the expenses from your pocket okay okay uh, yeah. and which Isme, is the best policy uh, can you suggest in, 
और बेस्ट पॉलिसी इंडिविजुअल स्पेसिफिक है तो आपकी रिक्वायरमेंट के हिसाब से आप दे सकते हैं और इवन जैसा सुमित ने बोला महावीर सर का बेशक डॉट ओ आर जी पे आप जाके एक्सपर्ट एडवाइस ले सकते हैं दैट इज प्योरली फ्री सो तनमे यू कैन क्विकली आस्क योर क्वेश्चन देन वी टेक अंकुश को क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम अंकुश थैंक यू ना माय क्वेश्चन वाज जस्ट आई वाज रिक्वेस्टिंग एनीबॉडी टू इलैबोरेट ऑन द टॉप अप ऑफ 90 लाख विद 10 लाख डिडक्टिबल सो दैट यू नो ऑल द लिसनर कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट let's say 6 years of age somebody spends 50 60 lakhs how much to be paid and how it works uh, if anybody can explain to me or mahavir i mean uh, maybe let's uh, if adit adit nahi hai okay so think of a uh, top up as uh, an additional cover over and above the base cover which essentially means that uh, let's say let's understand with the help of scenarios and when i say top up i mean super top up when there is a nuance between top up and super top up for time being usko chhod dete hain but just to understand the speeds right so uh, so if there is a base cover of 10 lakhs and a super top up of uh, 1 crore with a deductible of 10 lakhs what it essentially means is that if there is a claim of 5 lakhs first uh, those that would be covered by the base plan itself because it is less than 10 lakhs uh, if it, if there is a claim of 15 lakhs or let's say 20 lakhs uh base cover would take care of the 10 lakhs first 10 lakhs and super top up would take care of another 10 10 lakhs uh the reason why it makes sense to have two different covers uh and not an entire cover of 1 crore is because uh think of a scenario today 10 lakhs looks like a sizable amount but in let's say 15 years 20 years time that 10 lakh cover would would not look sizable so theoretically you could say okay i don't need the base plan and i'll just cover with carry on with the super top up anything under 10 lakh uh, i would pay from my pocket and 10 lakh in 20 years time would would be very very small uh, and i don't want to get into hassle of claiming getting my getting pre authorization done uh, or reimbursing from insurer at a later point in time but i'll just carry on with super top up for extreme risk which is like uh, blood cancers or cancers or which would cost a lot Does does that kind of help? Yeah, got it, got it. So, mate, uh, there is uh, one question from like uh, people who are into government or state government jobs, right? They have medical uh, cover from the uh, employer, right? So, for those also, it would be a suggestion to have a parallel policy, or like, uh, what would be your advice on that, Mahavir and Sumit both? Yeah, my rule of thumb is just ignore that you have a group cover. because uh, so in case of uh, 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 public sector company some of them have pretty uh, some of them do not have also have health cover but they also have tie ups with uh, hospitals wherein their all their healthcare expenses are taken care of and reimbursed so there are two arrangements there uh, things are probably slightly different for public sector companies because it probably would continue for for rest of your of your lifetimes and stuff uh, but again uh, at the end of the day uh, it's an employee benefits is over and above your salary it's optional and if if time comes uh, a cfo or hr would decide okay we're not going to continue this benefit and that that could happen any day legally allowed uh, given given and if that happens at a later point in time of your life when getting a health insurance from as in the capacity of individual becomes difficult it's probably a good idea to have a retail cover on your own uh, from from the get go right avir uh, any any input from your side and yeah. specifically yeah. if 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 we talk about cbss kind of facility yeah so it's about control actually in my view uh, typically if you uh, want to uh, you you look at healthcare expenses as personal expenses right uh, you if you want to control the quality and don't want to compromise at any point in time it's always good to have your own cover uh, i have spoken to a lot of defense personnel uh, in in the past and i've heard from them i have not experienced it myself that 
uh, network covers, network hospitals, uh, the provider network uh, has changed uh, significantly and it keeps changing. There is a lot of dynamic, it's very dynamic is what I've understood. Uh, so typically uh, there could be a juncture where if it is becoming very uh, expensive for the exchequer, uh, typically it could lead to curtailment of the cover or the curtailment of the quality of the cover or the curtailment of the network that is available, right? And then you may have to go for reimbursement and all that. So largely in my view, it is about control. Uh, and I typically suggest that even if you are a CGHS beneficiary or uh, you have a state government cover or any kind of cover, it is good if you are looking at having good control over your healthcare expenses and the quality of cover that you want uh, to have a personal cover also. All right. So one last question from Ankush. Ankush, you can ask your question, please. Uh, this is related to how to look at the base plan in the super top up. Like what is the metrics to analyze what amount of super top up is required for a particular person or particular requirement? Say some 10 lakh, some say 5 lakh, whatever the number is. How to look at it? What are the key uh, insights to look at it? Second thing is, uh, what are the disadvantages of super top up service uh, having a uh, other uh, mode like a full plan base cover covering up to the super top of limit or something like that. That's it. Thank you. Mm, okay, let me take this. So uh, typically the way we suggest it uh, is that uh, go for a 10 lakh as a base cover and then buy a super top over it. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for it. Uh, largely, uh, one of the reason is that you are not able to claim cashless from two policies very easily in today's case, in today's scenario. Uh, and hence having a sizable base cover is good so that most of your cashless claims do not require triggering of a second uh, claim from a second policy. That is one. Second is uh, most of the health insurance companies today provide the best uh, cover at 10 lakhs sum insured. So you are basically maxing out on all the benefits that you can get as a uh, as a policy holder. Typically, 5 lakhs is something which may not have all the good benefits that an insurer is providing. 10 lakhs is likely to have much better benefits. So that's why 10 lakhs is typically what is recommended. So that is one important thing. That 10 lakhs is what I would recommend. And then base that over that, I will buy an extension like a super top up, right? Uh, other metrics are typically uh, what we suggest is that ensure that you buy the super top up in the same uh, month, at least the same month when your base cover is up for renewal. Uh, this ensures that there is an important overlap between the two covers and this is slightly technical. I'll leave a link in the same thread so that people can read that over a, in an article. But typically that is one thing that we strongly recommend. Uh, also buying from the same insurer as much as possible if that insurer is good and you're happy with the insurer is also something that uh, typically is recommended. Uh, so these are uh, certain things that uh, uh, you should look at when you're uh, buying a super top of policy. All right. And there is one question around implication of eight year rule. So any thoughts on that? And think of that as equivalent of three-year rule in life insurance. Basically, beyond eight years, uh, insurers uh, do not really have a right to reject claims. Uh, yeah. it, it's essentially the same. Yeah. So yeah, insurance. there is a slight nuance. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I'm interrupting. Sure, you please, 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 please. Uh, in case of term insurance, it's clearly mentioned that. In case of life insurance, it's clearly mentioned that. All kinds of claims after three years are payable. So insurers cannot have the right to reject any claim. That is section 45. The moratorium, the eight-year moratorium that IIDA has introduced as per their own guidelines has an exception of fraud. So if an insurer is able to prove fraud in case of health insurance and fraud is basically that a, a customer has used willingly used methods to ensure that they're fooled with the insurer in some way of misrepresentation or mis or, or omitting some information and not giving right information and insurer is able to prove that you have willingly misrepresented then that eight year rule does not apply you will you can still face rejections so the short answer life insurance no exceptions three years completed you will get the claim 
health insurance eight years, but with an exception on fraud. Right. Thanks. So, Mavir, we we have many pending requests. So, I would request some time to your convenience. We may have another Q and A round on that uh, for today. It's late. We'll be closing. So, any any closing thoughts from both of you? Uh, I would suggest uh, if if you can buy early, uh, buy high cover, uh, buy a comprehensive base cover around ten lakhs, and then soup and top it up with a super top up, uh, and do not rely a lot on your uh, group insurance cover uh, because of reasons that we discussed over a call. Uh, yeah and hope that you never get to claim right and and if you don't get to claim just be happy about it and don't don't think that you've wasted all the premiums yeah uh, from my point of view uh, there are two things very very important one is focus on core benefits uh, do not uh, get distracted by uh, frills that insurers offer always remember that a health insurance company can withdraw any frill at any point in time uh iid has given free hand to insurers to remove frills like for example a restore no claim bonus all these things insurers can refile the product and remove it so focus on core benefits which are basically some insured uh, day care be- benefit no room rent limit those benefits you should focus on don't get distracted by free medical checkup and all that also don't overthink about it uh, which is a corollary to what sumit mentioned about a product and try to ask like 100 questions before you buy a health insurance try to keep a deadline and ensure that you buy within that deadline from wherever you want to buy but don't keep procrastinating on insurance the second is as much time you are spending in finding the right policy ensure you spend enough time to also find the right advisor for you because it plays a very crucial role at the time when things go wrong in terms of claims in terms of disputes in terms of any other issues that you face with insurer remember an insurer is not aligned with your interest at the time of claims because they're going to pay from their pocket right so having someone who is aligned to your interest with you at the time of claims is super super important and hence spend enough time to find a good advisor as much as you're spending time to find a good product great thoughts and points to and today's discussion so it was great pleasure having you both and it was really informative and hopefully like uh, the the uh, attendees which had questions and we couldn't take apologies for that uh, it's being late and uh, surely we'll try to catch up again uh, for this session or you can simply write in your questions over dm or maybe you can tweet a tag mahavir sumit and aditya and they will try to take uh, i mean try to answer those questions right and the session is recorded as i mentioned earlier so uh, if you're liking our session you can follow us and you can surely subscribe to youtube channel leaving aside insurance you will find plethora of information regarding capital markets and trust me like if you have patience because our sessions are lengthy you will surely uh, cherish the quality of guest which had been uh, like part of our sessions so thanks tanmay and uh, thanks everyone for their questions and attending uh, on uh, Uh, so late and uh, i hope i mean uh, everybody has uh, office tomorrow or maybe they go to work so it's quite late guys sorry for that thank you so much good night to you thank, thank you. you thank you prince thank for hosting you. it uh, it was a it was great to be part of uh, the twitter spaces and uh, hope to do it uh, sometime again soon yeah thanks thank you thank you thank you thank you prince thank it was you. great uh, being you 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 uh, being you